I am Josh Willis. I'm a climate scientist at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I study global warming and the oceans and sea level rise and other things, like cool. comedy. Okay. <laughs> you, you Tell me about comedy. Uh, well, I, uh, I'm a graduate of the Second City Improv Program in Hollywood. Get out of here! That's right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I have a little diploma right next to my PhD. Wow! <laughs> I am so impressed. Good times. <laughs> so, so is, uh, uh, if this uh, global warming thing doesn't work out, you There's gotta... always, I can always make fun of the people who are <laughs> ruining the climate. That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what's the biggest story in global climate right now? Uh, Donde esta el Nino? Where is the El Nino? Um, you know, uh, it's there, but it hasn't had a big impact on Southern California yet. But we expect it to. Really? So they have not had the, the usual... Um... Well, the usual rain from a big El Nino comes between January and about March or April and we just haven't had a January yet. Uh, so we're, uh, we're looking at big rain uh, and hopefully a bit of a down payment on our drought here in Southern California. <clears throat> the last time you and I talked was uh, 2014 and we were all expecting this El Nino to hit any minute and, and it, it held off for a year. What, what's up? Well, the last El Nino kind of petered out and um, we uh, we're looking really at 2015 for being the buildup of this huge event, which is now bigger than the 97 event. Uh, tell us about the 97 event. Well, in 97, we got hosed. We had uh, three or four or really five months of really high rain here in Southern California. The state had double the average rainfall and double the snowpack that year. So it was a really big year, and we're expecting a lot of rain again here in Southern California. But of course, El Nino is a global phenomenon. Um, it's not just Southern California that's getting hosed. Places like Indonesia are seeing crippling drought. Uh, places in South America and Brazil, southern parts of Brazil are getting flooded already. Uh, so the uh, rainfall and climate that we're used to is all turned on its head during an El Nino year. Okay, so is this something California should be happy about? Well, El Nino is sort of a double-edged sword. We've had a drought, a punishing drought, for more than a decade, really. And this will be a nice down payment on that drought. It won't end the drought, but we should crawl out of it a little ways. But the problem is that the rains can be punishing as well. In Southern California, uh, we're prone to mudslides, flooding, uh, high tides, that's true all up and down the California coast, and uh, we're probably looking at some damage along with our lovely rain. Uh, what about uh, uh, global temperature? How does, how does El Nino affect that? Well, uh, El Nino is a rearrangement of heat, and normally we talk about heat moving from the western Pacific to the eastern Pacific, but it also concentrates in the surface layer of the ocean. That means that the surface of the ocean is higher than normal, warmer than normal on average during an El Nino year. And essentially, the whole atmosphere is slave to what the top 100 meters or so of the ocean is doing. So whenever there's an El Nino, the oceans push heat towards the surface and we feel it in the atmosphere. And, and then the opposite of El Nino is? La Nina, which uh, is occasionally a rebound from an El Nino. In 1997, the huge El Nino that we had flipped and turned into a massive La Nina, and that can actually bring drought back to the southwest United States. So we could be in for a wild ride, but hopefully we'll at least get a nice down payment on the drought in the meantime. Okay, so uh, many people, when they look at the temperature record, they, they go back as far as the 98 El Nino, which was a huge spike in global temperature. And uh, it looks like we're spiking again. Do you have any, any 
perspective on that? Yeah, we're going to set another record temperature for this year. Um, the El Nino has pushed warm water near the surface and is heating up the surface of the planet in a way that will be unprecedented given the fact we've had another 15 years of global warming added on to what was already there. Okay, so let's talk about uh, where heat goes, you know, when, when, when uh, you have an El Nino, the, the ocean is pushing heat out. And when you have a La Nina, it seems like the ocean is kind of sucking more heat in. Am I right? Or Well, not exactly. Uh, I mean, the fact is that the ocean is absorbing heat all the time. Uh, we're adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere at an incredible rate. And that means the Earth keeps more heat than it sends back out to space. Now, an El Nino or a La Nina might have a tiny effect on that. But what mainly happens is that heat that's already in the ocean comes back to the surface for a year or so. And it warms the surface of the ocean, and that means it's warming the surface of the planet. Remember, the ocean is two-thirds of the surface of our planet, so if the top layer of the ocean is extra warm and toasty, so is the rest of the planet.